you know, ooh. ooh. <laughs> but see, that, that's a thing, though. Like, you have, and this is, I mean, even just one of the email exchanges we had a while back, something you encouraged me with that is hard. How do you, like, it is threatening when people are blogging about you or podcasting about you or speaking or preaching sermons about you. How have you gotten to a place where it's not, it doesn't bother you, uh, that you are secure in your true self and like it takes a lot of work to get there. <laughs> um, first off, I'm not even aware. I don't live in a world where people would preach sermons about other people. Yeah. So I'm not even aware of that. I'm not Googling my name. I don't, that isn't something I would only come across something like that from someone telling me about it. Mm. And that's not like, it's just irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, and this is a thing I think that's important for a lot of people to understand is you have a calling, you have a path, you have a thing you're doing. Um, and when you know what you're doing, then it gives you a grid or a filter through which to understand that which comes your way. Hmm. So, so this person over here is being criticized for doing, you know, for breaking the rules of golf, but they're playing tennis. <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't. Yeah. So proving to a particular group of people whom I don't even know that somehow I'm orthodoxer, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? That, that was never the goal. Okay. Um, yeah. And and so that's part of it is you have to, and the, the truth is we follow people who have something that we want. Mm. Joy, peace, light, calm, love, courage, perseverance. Sure. The truth is we, we actually, we actually listen to people who in some way, um, Stephen Colbert has joy. Sure. It may be political satire, but that man has joy. And if you read about his personal story and the tragedy that he has suffered, you, uh, you begin to understand where his joy comes from. It comes through suffering. Hmm. Um, so people follow Stephen Colbert because they want to laugh and they want to make fun of Fox News, but they really follow him because he brings joy to the world and people want joy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, when someone wakes up in the morning and, and looks out at the world and its brokenness and suffering and pain and heartache and the best thing they can possibly think of to do with their God-given and sacred holy energies is to blog about somebody who's trying to to bring some hope and light to the world. Mm. If that's the best exercise of their God-given energies is to tear down somebody else, um, mm. that just doesn't have, I, like, <laughs> that's so far outside of what I'm doing with my life. I don't, like, yeah. it's as Tom York from Radiohead uh, okay. calls it refrigerator buzz. Mm. It's, it's somewhere back there in the room. I don't even notice it. I guess if I got real still and listened, I could probably hear it for a minute. But other than that, it's just... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, so so I, I think that's the thing you're asking. You have to know who you are and what you're doing. Yeah. So, so I have good friends. And I have good, I was talking to a good friend yesterday who, who's been a friend for 15 years. And I have friends who will say, hey, be careful of this. Or that thing you did there that could be taken, that could be interpreted this way. Um, surround yourself with people who will tell you the truth long before the critics ever would. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and who will help you, this is a thing you're doing, then do that thing. And then there, of course, will always be costs. That's fine, that's part of it. It's no problem, it's no, it's no big deal. Yeah, totally, I mean, that's a refreshing perspective, and it, it obviously it takes a lot of work to get there, though. And uh, yeah, and you have it, it. Your clarity and your intention are extremely crucial to this. You have to decide. I am going to. You have to go through it, and the thing about pain, misunderstanding, criticism, your neighbor, your family, your people, people receiving heat, criticism, yeah. pushback, is it creates pain and there are a thousand ways to go around the pain mm -hmm. one of them is to lash out and just log back um, just to put up your just put up your fists yeah 
one of them is to avoid it. One of them is to, just to anesthetize yourself to the pain through bear. You, you, there's lots of ways to do that. Just numb yourself. Um, but you have to be very clear and intentional about going through the pain. You have to go all the way into the heart of it. People don't like me. People misunderstand me. People think I'm an idiot. People, you have to like f- let the full weight of it. Um, there's this, I've written this line above my computer on the wall here yeah. from Rumi. It says, another wave will smash us. Then the meeting we have wanted will occur. That's awesome. So good. Yeah. 12th century mystic in Afghanistan. Another wave will smash us. Then the meeting we have wanted will occur. Everybody wants a transcendent experience experience of lightness of being. We want the sense like there's joy and life and we're free and we can boom into the world. But it happens when all the parts of you that are fearful and all the parts of you that are concerned about what people think and all the parts of the ego that are caught up and how will this appear, that all has to be burned away. Yeah. And the way it's burned away is through difficult times, through heat and fire. You know what I mean? Yep. So everybody wants this feeling. They, they wonder, like, why is so-and-so just so free to be who they are? Inevitably, they have had experiences in which the things that needed to be burned away were burned away. Mm. Another wave will smash us. And then yeah. the meeting we have wanted will occur. <laughs>